Listeners, I intentionally bought two packages this year of bees that I didn't need. I bought them because the weather was going to really be bad, and I thought that I needed to know the pain that some of you were going to feel trying to introduce those bees during cold weather. Jeff, have you ever done such a thing? Hey, Jim, thanks for inviting me to the show today. You know, uh, yes, yes, I have this much the same way. All the packages, when we ordered packages this year, they said end of April, beginning of May, which is good for this time of year. But all the packages were early this year. We got our packages in, 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 in mid-April. And that's a very cool, wet time of year to receive packages and yep. nukes in this part of the world. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it, Jeff. Jeff's from Beekeeping Today podcast, and I'm Jim Tew. I come to you about once a week talk to you on anything beekeeping on our podcast on Thursday morning. You are listening to Honey Bee Obscura, brought to you by Growing Planet Media, the folks behind Beekeeping Today podcast. Each week on Honey Bee Obscura, host Kim Flodham and Jim Tu explore the complexities, the beauty, the fun, and the challenges of managing honeybees in today's world in an engaging and informative discussion meant for all beekeepers long timers and those just starting their journey with bees so sit back and enjoy the next several minutes as kim and jim explore all things honeybees jeff when they came in you know it's always a party isn't it it is there's all that excitement there's all those new bee people who don't know they should be anxious you know they've waited and they waited they ordered they've read and here all these bees are and that that uh, excitement is infectious. The anticipation is really fun. In fact, uh, it, when I went to take uh, pick up packages, I took my recorder and for Beekeeping Today podcast, I had uh, I did some field interviews with beekeepers as they're waiting for their uh, to be handed their packages of bees, and it, you know it's infectious and and uh, fun atmosphere. The thing that's so peculiar about it is that you know I don't want to be the old guy, the one who always lives 25, 30 years ago, but it just brings back so many good feelings, you know, when everything about beekeeping was a mystery, and oddly it still is, Jeff, but <laughs> just a mi mystery you kind of grow accustomed to as so much time passes. But I got those that day, and I knew straight away. I mean, I I didn't have the luxury 30 mm -hmm. years ago of such intricate weather-producing systems. I mean, you can almost tell to the minute some of these weather apps what some algorithms are going to tell me the weather's doing and every algorithm i had a few weeks ago was for cold snow rain sleet nowhere in that weather algorithm did it mention a good day for releasing package bees <laughs> well we had kind of the opposite on on package pickup day it was sunny and it looked really nice and then it just went through the basement uh, and went through the, yep. then the temperature dropped through the floor uh, that night. It was, it was nasty. So, so, so what, what happened? You, you picked up your bees and was it a good day, weather day that day? It was a good weather day that day. It's one of those days that you just can't believe that the predictors are going to be correct about how dire things are. <laughs> but I had been forewarned, and I got them home, and right on schedule, the clouds darkened, and everything that they predicted would happen, happened. Mm. And so what I paid the money for was to review and to clearly remember the anxiety that you feel when those bees are out in your dark shop on the floor, so it's reasonably cool, but not cold. Mm -hmm. And you're in the house watching brain-dead television, and the whole time you're thinking, I wonder if those feeder cans are empty. <laughs> I wonder if I should raise the temperature in the shop a little bit. <laughs> are they are they okay or not? I mean, how, you know, it's, it's $270, $290 I paid for them, so it's meaningful money. So the first thing I want to bring up to the listeners is that it's okay. It's normal. It's natural to worry about those bees when they're in that package. That's not a normal condition for wild honeybees to be contained in a screened package. Right. Yeah. And it's, 
I mean, the whole the whole package B process is unnatural for him, too. I mean, we won't go into that in this episode, no. but it's... <laughs> There's a lot of things that are not natural under our bee world that look perfectly normal to us as humans managing bees. But this package thing, what a trip that must be for bees trying to figure out what's happening to them. They don't know the other bees in the package necessarily. They've never seen this queen, and who's the crazy guy in the white suit here? <laughs> so there's a lot of a lot of mystery about that. Jeff, I don't shake packages out mm. much anymore. I was taught in my earliest days in warm, warm, blue sky at Alabama just to shake the bees out. You know, it's mm-hmm. abrupt, one and done. Right. Shake them all out, clean things up, and put the empty package away and go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you do? I put a shell on. What's a shell? Yeah, what's a shell? It's just it's just an empty deep. There's okay. nothing in it. I lo- I want a deep because I've got more room to handle the package. Mm-hmm. And then everything goes inside that shell. I lay the package on its side. I put the queen cage just outside of the opening on the top bars. Mm-hmm. And then the feeder can. I, I do silly things. I take two common soda straws that I've saved from a fast food meal, and then I knock one or two more holes in the feeder can so the syrup comes out a little bit faster. And then I put the feeder can on top of those soda straws so the bees have some clearance to get ah. underneath to take the feed, and I put that right in the general vicinity. So no bees are shaken out. I mm-hmm. try to keep the bees from not flying much at all. I lay the package on its side, set the feeder up, put the queen right in the entrance there, and then I probably put uh, some fondant someplace close by just because I, I'm, a, I'm a worrier. Yeah. When you set up the shell and you lay the package on its side, you've already taken out the queen and the can, the syrup can. I was, when I was telling you that, I was thinking, boy, the devil is in the details. <laughs> you know, one of the things that's really a pain to do is to get that feeder can out. Yes. You can't, you can't grip it with anything. Now, let me tell the listeners, there's two, two broad kinds of cages. Mm. There's that plastic cage that really I tried to come up with any other use that's a nice cage. I'm thinking, can you grow orchids in this thing? I've tried to use it to go under beehives. They don't stand the weight. There's got to be some other use for these nice plastic packages. They're the newer models. Mm-hmm. The ones that most of the old people are accustomed to are the wooden packages. Right. What I've learned to do since I got about 500 of these packages that you save every year like you're going to do something with them, I really don't. I've got about, I keep about 20. The others I just have to dispose of. I've just gotten brutal. Just jam the hive tool through the side of that wire package and push that feeder can out from the bottom. Mm. That way I can hook it. And yes, the, the package is ruined for any subsequent use, but it wasn't going to have any use anyway. That's the problem. And then when you get the queen out, what are you going to do? Work as quickly as possible. Lay that, for the time being, lay that lid back on the package to keep the bees from flying out. Mm -hmm. Any bee that flies out, for the most part, kind of disoriented. Well, they are disoriented. Lost may be a better word. So I like to put that lid back on the, the package after it's opened up. And then I check to be sure the queen's alive. Mm-hmm. The bee is going to be probably holding on to the cage, but at that pivotal moment, I need to know if she's alive at that moment. And uh, normally, thankfully, she is. Yeah. And then that's when I, I don't take the cork out of the queen uh, candy plug cage. I lay it down right there. And that was my follow-up question because I've had queens show up with both a candy plug and and or just a cork plug and the beekeeper has an option to either you know put a marshmallow in the end or just a quick release of the queen yep. what's what's your preference and and we're talking about cold weather now too uh and this cold weather specifically mm-hmm. what is cold you know I, the, the our canadian beekeeper friends if we have any <laughs> listeners may probably chuckling at us right now right right i suspect people in minnesota are chucking at chuckling at me here in Ohio, so calling what cold weather is. <laughs> well, cold weather to me was pr- was pretty brisk. It was, I thought it was cold. It was around 28 to 30. It was snowing, cold rain, sleet. 
That's called for bees. This is not good package weather, so that Mm -hmm. may be worse somewhere else. But, you know, it's still my $300 here that I'm dealing with, so I want this to survive. I I get both kinds of queen cages. In one case, they, they actually give me a little tube that has sugar fondant packed in it. And then Mm. when you're ready to release the queen, you pull the cork out and put that tube in. But as we will discuss in a few minutes, you tell me when you think we're ready. (laughs) When you, what do you do with that queen after you've waited how long? Uh, Kim and I have talked about this. We've agreed on things. We've disagreed on things. How long do you wait with that package queen? How long do you worry? You know, in that chair you sit in <laughs> when you're watching TV, worrying about those packages. Well, after the packages are open, then you sit in the same chair, probably watch a different television program and worry about the caged queen. Are they covering her? Did I leave them close enough to the cluster that they'll cover that cage over? Is the cage too big? Is she freezing right now? Well, all you can do is the best you can do. Right, yeah. Jeff? Reassure me here. Well, absolutely. I think that's um, you have to make a decision and and go with it and say, well, either it's going to work or it's not going to work. But I've made a decision and and they're on their own at this point. And and I think I go I always go back to the axiom that that well, it's not an axiom, but just that we overmanage our bees. And if we just let our bees be bees, they'll take yep. care of themselves. Yep. I want to take a minute. Get my thoughts together. Let's hear from our sponsors, and then we'll talk about releasing those coins. What makes Better Bee different as a beekeeping supplier is their focus on bringing new, innovative products to the market, such as the Colorado Bee Vac. The Colorado Bee Vac is the world's leading bee vacuum, trusted to quickly and safely capture bees during cutouts or swarms and easily transfer them to a hive. The Colorado Bee Vac was carefully crafted and tested to relocate bees while drastically minimizing any losses. Visit betterbee.com slash bvac to learn more and get yours today. It depends on the weather, Jeff, on how long. I don't, I don't want to leave the queen confined a day longer than I have to, but neither do I want to release her yeah. a day sooner than she should be released. What day is that? I don't know. It's part of the... The uh, challenge of beekeeping, you you give it your best shot. Normally, after six days, I figure that she may have been with that package two days before, two days in transit, six days in the package. She's been in that cage a long time. This is where it gets dicey with me. I don't know why, but I open the cage. Mm -hmm. I yes. On rare occasions, I've had queens come out of that cage like their rear ends were a fire and take off. They're gone. <laughs> and then you get to write articles about that. Where is she? Where is she? But more often than not, they just run right down into the colony. Right. Yeah. Well, at this point, someone like you should say, Jim, why don't you just let them chew their way out? There you go. That was my that was my follow up question. Why not use that little bit of and dried the up answer? I just marshmallow <laughs> waiting to give you is that I don't trust them. Sometimes you think, well, they'll go right in, they'll eat like crazy, and they'll release that queen. Sometimes yeah. the fondant has gotten harder, and it may take four or five days. Uh, you know, it can take a long time for the bees to eat through that fondant. So if I go back and check. That's okay. You can have a look. Well, she's still in there. They haven't eaten her out yet. But the whole purpose for this discussion today is that it's cold. Right. So every time I open that bee colony up that with all those packages, no brood to replace them, and the workers go flying out, they're probably not going to find that package again. They're probably going to die. So in all cases, do no harm. Mm-hmm. So at that moment, I have decided that I want to open it up release her and be done with it. Yeah. Uh, this year it, it was, it was cold and it was spit and rain when I released the bees and I did shake them out gently. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I wasn't trying to get dirt out of my shoe, but I was gently shaking them out because I knew they're cold, disoriented. Um, and, and I left the queen in the cage with, with a candy plug or with a, 
mushroom, marsh, marsh, marshmallow. And because I wanted to get them closed up out of the rain and get them settled because I figured the longer I had them open, the more they were flying around, the worse off for them. So I'd rather pull the Band-Aid off quick and get them closed up yeah. and, and get it over with as opposed to this is my approach. I mean, right or wrong. But the advantage that, or the one trick that I also include, so that when I, later in the evening or later in the day that I was wondering about how the bees were doing, is as you know, I I have sensors on my bees, and I was able to sit there and monitor, and over the next several days or even to now, monitor the temperature of the beehive to know whether the bees are maintaining heat and then if it's just kind of you know maintenance heat maybe 60 degrees maybe 20 degrees above ambient or something or whether they were popping it up into the brood rearing temperatures and and i knew even though it was cold outside because it we got into a three-week cold snap after I mean, we're basically still cold uh, after the release, uh, after the packages showed up, that I could monitor the temperature. And as the temperatures re- reached up into into the brood rearing temperature, I was confident that the queen was, uh, I, I knew that she had been released because I did do a quick check three days after I installed the packages. The queens were released. I pulled the packages, quickly popped the, the, the top back on because it was still cold and rainy. And, but I could follow the temperature of the brood, brood nest, and I knew that she was active because they had the brood temperature up. And, and so I said, I don't need to pull that hive apart to make sure she's, she's laying because uh, right or wrong, my figure, if they're keeping it up to 92 degrees or so in the brood chamber, that they had eggs in place and she was doing her job. Well, after listening to that, my inclination is to say no fair. No fair. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I mean you don't. Ha- I have to. I don't know all those things about my beehives. <laughs> I don't have that sophisticated technology in place that I do envy. It sounds really interesting in space age. And I guess you're doing all this with an app on your phone or on the computer. Well, yeah, yeah, yes, both, all of the above. That's really an interesting system. It is, and 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 it's a cheating way of of dealing with the bees, and and this this cold wet weather is. I can I can inspect the bees, check up on them. I guess I should say check up on the general health. I can get a a ten thousand foot level idea of how they're doing by just looking at how the, they're maintaining heat compared to the ambient temperature without having to open them up in this cool, wet weather that we have in the Pacific Northwest. All right. I'm going to put that down as possible Christmas <laughs> gift suggestions. Dear Santa. <laughs> but I did do other things. I, yeah, please. I conscientiously mm-hmm. chose that expanded polystyrene equipment. I have some of that. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I thought I wanted to do was have my hive insulated as much as I can. And then the second thing that's not in any book that I know of, not that I'm that clever, it's just that I'm that desperate, there's a difference, <laughs> is I, I, I'm experimenting with this Mylar sheets, you know, the emergency blankets. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can put one in your shirt pocket. They're cheap. So I saw a television show last night, and a, a woman in a car wreck, they wrapped her in a Mylar sheet, an emergency yes. blanket. Mm-hmm. So I cut those things up, and I put them around strategically, and I lay an old towel over everything. So I hoped that by using an insulated colony and by closing down the entrance and by stopping the draft that would pass through the colony, that somehow I would keep the bees warmer in that box. I didn't know what else to do. So how are the bees today? Well, right now, I don't know, because, Jeff, after five or six (laughs) beautiful days, it went back below freezing. So I got mm-hmm. the queens out. I went mm-hmm. back in. I found both the queens a few days later, something I shouldn't have done. But in beekeeper fashion, I just couldn't stay out of the hives. And I did see the queens out, both of them. And then the weather took a turn down. And right now, all the maple blooms of apples are being, you know, the orchards are having to have heaters in the orchards because we got four or five days of back down to 25 or so. So I think they're okay. Anytime I try to look, it causes confusion. Bees come flying out. They come out the entrance, and then I've done more harm than good. So I I have to hope that I left enough food store there and that they're okay. It's a big topic. 
It's it's a fun one, though. Can we leave it like this? Yeah. If they're okay, we'll talk about them again sometime. If they're not okay, we're never going to bring this subject up again. <laughs> we'll, we'll analyze to death everything <laughs> we did wrong and hopefully share our, yep. our knowledge. Uh, my total intent was to introduce packages in cold weather the way other people were having to do it. Not that I'm special, but just I, I wanted to understand what we were all going through. Well, thanks a lot for inviting me in today, Jim. Uh, this has been a delightful conversation and and one I hope that uh, we'll both be able to use next year. Yep. Well, I hope so, too. And uh, thanks to you and thanks to everyone who's listened all the way to this point. They deserve some kind of an award. Leave us a comment if you want to talk to us. We'll try to get back to you. See you, Jeff. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Jim.